Okay, hi. So um, uh, this is joint work with Ahmed Hassani, Andreas Kraus, and uh, Stefanie Gergelka. And let me directly start with a couple of motivating applications. So the first one is about modeling um, gene alterations, um, and uh, which could potentially uh, cause different uh, uh, forms of cancer. So what we usually have is this binary alteration matrix. And so in the rows, you have basically different genes that uh, could be mutated. And in the columns, you have uh, different patients that have kind of, um, you know, um, different sets or combinations of these mutations. Uh, and in particular, um, people are interested in modeling effects such as, for example, mutual exclusivity. Um, so you have groups of genes that tend to not occur together uh, in patients, and these are usually the ones that also uh, are supposed to cause uh, cancer. And you also have sometimes effects uh, such as co-occurrence. So they are like a, um, basically groups of genes that tend to occur together more frequently. Um, okay, here's a, a much more uh, lighthearted example that I'll, uh, I'll go with here. Um, not like two days ago, when I was traveling here, I saw this uh, big news that this OpenAI uh, bots basically uh, won a game, uh, so this online game called Dota 2, uh, which is pretty famous, versus uh, human pros. And so if you don't know anything about these games, the setup is very similar to these genes. Again, you have a, like a pool of characters that people can uh, choose from, and then basically you have two teams of these weird looking characters here, and people choose basically five of them, each team, and then they play against each other, this kind of complex, strategic, real-time game, and you know, one of them wins. So here I'm not interested in these uh, real-time interactions, but I'm interested in just how you choose these teams. And it turns out it's very similar, again, the setup you again can look at, you know, this binary matrix here, where in the rows you have basically all the possible choice for characters, and then the columns are, you know, you can look at history, uh, historical uh, data, and look at teams that professional teams uh, have uh, chosen, so combinations of these characters. And again, you have kind of these uh, interactions, uh, such as exclusivity or co-occurrence, so some characters work together well, others uh, don't. Okay, so to sum up this uh, kind of general uh, setup here, we have a ground set V of possible choices. We have a data set which consists of kind of subsets of this ground set of choices that have been made. And then what we want to do is uh, somehow model um, these uh, choices. And one way to do this is to have a probabilistic model basically over sets here. So this is a distribution over sets parameterized by some uh, parameters theta here. Um, and it looks like this, so it's basically e to the f, where f is some scoring uh, set function, and z is the normalizer. And note here that our focus is basically on modeling higher order interactions, so this means we want to go beyond kind of classical Ising models, et cetera, and model these kind of more complex uh, interactions between elements of this ground set. Uh, and again, these uh, models uh, generalize well-known models from the past. So if the kind of f is a graph cut, then you get a standard for magnetic Ising model. If f is a log determinant, um, you get a determinant point process, uh, process uh, et cetera. All right, so uh, one thing we want to do with these models is learn these parameters theta from uh, data. And one straightforward way to do this is to just run your favorite uh, you know, gradient ascent uh, uh, algorithm and uh, use maximum likelihood on the on the uh, so maximize the likelihood on the data set, and it turns out to do this, you actually need to be able to compute gradients uh, of theta of this uh, partition function of this normalizer uh, normalizer z, which in general is very well known to be really hard to uh, to compute. Um, so what we usually do is we want to actually approximate this quantity, right? Which means we need to actually perform inference in these kind of models, and one way to do this is to actually uh, sample from uh, our distribution p of theta. So for the rest of the talk, I'm not gonna talk so much about learning, uh, and I'm gonna focus on how, ex how to uh, perform inf inference, in particular how to sample from such probabilistic models. Um, so the most straightforward way, and everybody probably knows how to do this, is to just run a simple local move uh, sampler, so for example, a Gibbs sampler. Uh, in, so uh, here I'm having, I have an example of a very small uh, state space, basically our grant is just, uh, consists of three elements here, the state space then would be just a Boolean lat lattice basically, or like an n-dimensional hypercube, and then what the Gibbs sampler would do at each step is just, if I am at a state at, at, at uh, you know, step t, then at the next step I either add or remove an element to that set, right? I do a very local move along these edges of this hypercube, or I stay at the same step. And it's also well known that the Gibbs sampler has uh, sometimes trouble in these state spaces. And in particular, one of the big problems is these kinds of, uh, what are called bottlenecks. So uh, conceptually, when your state space can be divided into two parts here, omega one and omega two, and the Gibbs sampler has trouble going from one part uh, to the other, which leads to really high, or may lead to really high mixing times. 
Okay, so what we want to address in this paper is if there is a better way um, to kind of jump over these bottlenecks and alleviate this, uh, this problem that uh, local samplers might have. Okay, um, so what we propose to do that is um, a different kind of sampler, which we call this m cubed chain here, which stands for mixture of uh, log modulars metropolis chain. So let me explain each of these parts one by one, and I'll start with the metropolis part, which is fairly straightforward. So our chain is just a standard metropolis chain, so which means we have a target distribution here, P, that was a distribution that I was talking about before, so this is this E to the F. Then we have a proposal distribution, Q of ST, I'm gonna talk about this in a second. And then at each step, we just, so if, I, if we are at state S at the moment, uh, we get the proposal T from, the, from a proposal distribution Q, and then we accept with a standard metropolis Hastings probability uh, as shown here. Okay, let me talk now about this uh, proposal distribution Q, which we define here as basically, um, it has uh, the form of a mixture, and this mixture is um, basically a weighted sum of this E to the MI distributions. So each of those here um, <clears throat> is basically a distribution, a product distribution over N independent variables. So that's where the log modulars come from. So basically each MI here is just a sum over MIV. So what's important to note here is that the way I've defined this, uh, this proposal mixture, it basically doesn't depend at all on S. So um, what we do in the end is basically we propose globally the next state to go to independently of where we are right now, which is kind of conceptually what would help you jump over these bottlenecks. It doesn't depend, it's, it's not a local sampler, it does these global proposals. Let me talk a little bit more about this proposal. So first, um, because we have chosen these um, terms in the mixture to be exactly this independent variable uh, distribution, it means that we can sample from this, so this ZQ here is tractable, and we can sample from this proposal in uh, just O of N uh, time. So this is very straightforward. Second, it is also straightforward to show that basically um, you can approximate any uh, distribution over sets arbitrarily well with a mixture Q, but as you might expect, in the worst case, you might need actually a really large number of components to do that. So you would think that it actually might be impractical to just use this because you might need an exponential number of components, right? So what's the point? So what we want to um, say in this paper is that basically we don't expect to get a proposal Q that really approximates our, uh, our target distribution really well everywhere, but rather we, won't, uh, we, we want to just use this proposal to jump over bottlenecks. So that we don't really want accuracy. And to uh, further illustrate this point, um, what we propose to do is to actually combine this m cubed sampler with a simple local sampler, uh, like Gibbs, for example, here. And this uh, combination is straightforward, so basically at each step, just flip a coin with bias alpha, and if it comes heads, um, do a Gibbs step, otherwise do uh, this m cubed step. Okay, to show you why this might be useful and why this might be work better than Gibbs by itself, I'm gonna go back to my, uh, to my original uh, state space here with a bottleneck, and there is this very interesting uh, the composition theorem by Jerome et al, which basically says the following. So I want to see how my chain does on my original uh, state space. What I can do is basically decompose it into two parts. The first part is called the projection chain, which only looks at transition between one part and the other, and nothing else. And the second part is, uh, are these restriction chains, which only look at how the sampler does inside each region, independently of how it jumps between them. Okay, and now, um, and now what we want to do is basically say that uh, what we would expect here is that the projection, the, the Gibbs sampler would be bad for the projection chain because it has this problem with, uh, for going between one part and the other, but hopefully our global sampler will be good for that because it just jumps around without uh, caring about where you are at each point. And on the other hand, on the restriction chains, the Gibbs sampler will probably uh, be able to do well because there are no bottlenecks there, but our sampler, because it doesn't approximate uh, the, the, the distribution everywhere well, might not be that good uh, in each of those parts. So in the end, this is composition theorem, roughly says that if you know, have now a combination of these, two, um, of these two chains, and each of them does well in either the projection or the restriction chain, if you combine them together, then you get kind of the best of both worlds, and you get a good uh, sampling performance in the original state space. Let me briefly mention here that <clears throat> uh, we show a concrete example of this, of, of uh, basically a proof of this for a specific class of Ising models, uh, just basically as a proof of concept that this actually works. 
so these models are uh, known from statistical physics. They're called uh, Curie-Wise models. They're basically Ising models on the complete graph. And they're interesting here because they have exactly this uh, form of state space that I show here. So basically, it is known that the state space consists of two parts. There is a bottleneck in between. It's known that the Gibbs sampler has exponential mixing time um, uh, in these models. It's also known that the restriction chain, so if you just restrict yourself in each of these parts, um, the Gibbs sampler does fine in, in these. So it's like uh, alpha and squared roughly. So what we show in this paper is that basically if you handcraft a specific uh, proposal mixture of just two components, um, you can uh, see that the M cubed sampler, so the one we propose, um, actually has constant mixing time just going between the two. So if you use this decomposition uh, theorem to combine the two, you get that the combination of both then also has uh, uh, about n squared uh, mixing time. And note here again that for the M cubed sampler, we actually don't know its behavior over the whole state space, and we don't really care about it. What we want from it is to just jump over bottlenecks, and the rest can be uh, hopefully some, uh, handled by, uh, by Gibbs. Okay. So the last point I want to make here is that I've talked uh, right now in this example about hand handcrafting this uh, proposal mixture, but in general you want to actually uh, have a way of uh, automatically uh, constructing it, right, in practice. So I want to briefly talk about uh, how we propose to, use, uh, to do this, and this is um, a heuristic algorithm here that we have. So it consists of two parts. So here we want to construct a mixture of size r, basically, and it has this form of sum e to the mi, where each mi is to this modular function. So it has two parts. First, we, draw, we, we uh, create a permutation of our ground set V, and the second part, we create an approximate modular function that approximates our function F at that permutation. And I want to quickly just uh, talk about the second part first. So what we propose to use for this approximate modular function is what are called semi-gradients. Um, if you don't know anything about those, in like two words, um, they're very much related to submodularity. So submodularity is a natural diminishing returns property that has been used a lot in uh, discrete optimization. And it is known that submodular functions have this modular lower and upper approximations, which are called uh, sub and uh, super gradients. So they're kind of the discrete analog of uh, a linear function in the convex setting, in the, in the continuous convex setting. Um, and so in our case, this construction works for general set functions f, but they're usually kind of uh, related to submodularity in the discrete optimization setting. Uh, so coming to the first step, uh, one baseline is to just basically construct a random permutation of the ground set and then use this random permutation to uh, get this semi-gradient approximation and build uh, up the, the mixture like that. Uh, we also propose another kind of smarter uh, method, which basically at each step tries to kind of find or approximate the set where the function and our current mixture disagree by the most and then try to fit a linear function or a modular function at that point. So it's kind of like an incremental construction of Q by kind of trying to incrementally minimize the maximum disagreement. But of course, this is just approximate here um, in the end. All right. Uh, to end, let me show you a few experiments illustrating all these points that I've talked about before. So uh, coming back to this online uh, game setting, um, the setup here is we have a ground set of uh, basically 48 characters that you can choose from. Um, we have, uh, from, so from various previous tournaments, we have uh, collected uh, 8.5K teams. Each of them has five characters. And then we have a learned uh, model, which in this case is a facility location diversity uh, model, which has kind of this form of modular plus a facility location function. Okay, and we want to see how uh, well we can uh, sample in this kind of model. Um, so I'll show here plots where the y-axis is basically a standard convergence measure for MCMC algorithms, this uh, potential scale reduction fa factor, and the x-axis is always samples, so lower is better. And the first plot just compares basically vanilla Gibbs with these two flavors of the combined sampler. Um, so basically one of them is this random permutation, and the second one is this incremental uh, construction. And you see both of them uh, kind of do better, and this incremental construction does better than random um, uh, permutations. So the second plot simply shows that basically, uh, as you would expect, the more mixture components I use, the better I do, but at some point there is some saturation. So there is some form of like capacity of how well I can approximate my original function with this mixture uh, construction. And the third and final plot, which I think is kind of the more important and is illustrative here, and goes back to what I was talking about before, is if you look at kind of just running Gibbs or just running this enqueued sampler, 
both of those do worse than combining both together. So I think this exactly um, gives you kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, experimentally kind of verifies this, this idea that I said before about this decomposition idea that kind of if you combine them, you get the best of both worlds and in the end you mix faster than either of them individually. Okay, so to sum up, um, the three points that I've made here. So we have proposed this MQ sampler, which basically proposes uh, global moves in the state space, uh, independent of where you are at, uh, at this point. And this is exactly to overcome these sort of bottlenecks that are usual. Um, the second point was we proposed to use the sampler in combination with a local sampler and to kind of leverage this decomposition um, theorem idea. And third, we also propose uh, an automatic construction um, of this uh, proposal used by uh, the MQ sampler based on the semi-gradients. And I think this is an interesting direction in general to kind of try to incorporate ideas from, you know, from discrete optimization um, into uh, probabilistic inference. Okay, that's all, thanks.